What's up everybody? Today we're going to be going over my layering system, how I mitigate sweat, which layers I take depending on the varying conditions through the mid-season point. This year, Chase and I really took a deep dive into layering systems. This is something that if you've been following the podcast for a little while, if you've been paying attention, I started going out to Colorado last year. And in doing that, uh, the layering systems, technical wear, became a focal point of the discussion piece. Since then, I met Locke Wheeler. He was on the podcast recently at the Birmingham Deer Show uh, a couple years back. And we had a really good time going over and diving into how to build a layering system. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using the Scree Gear line of camouflage and technical layering system. These are the ones that we are using this year. Uh, if you want to save some money on Scree Gear, having watched this video, use the promo code chasing tails T A L E S in all caps and you can save 15% on your order. But this video is going to be about the mid season, early season to mid season. How am I layering here in Florida? Because I really feel like as a saddle hunter, as a mobile hunter, as someone who deals with inclement weather and temperature fluctuations that are, you know, as varying as they can be right here in the deep south, that that this system really is going to help you. But this video is going to be about that mid that early to mid season range of temperatures you know hot 90s and then as you move into november creeping up on december here uh, you start to have those really nice cold fronts that come through it's 37 degrees the other day which is awesome this system that we're talking about i think would probably take you down to about let's say 40s somewhere in that 40s range and i think you're going to enjoy it we're going to do a follow-up video with cold weather gear kind of towards the the later part of the season if you're up north it's, it's starting to creep in now but here in the deep south it's kind of our mid-season cool point. Highs in the 70s, lows in the 40s and 50s. And as that cool front moves through, it might be 30 to 40 degrees and kind of kind of brisk with that wind blowing through. So we're gonna start on the early season, earliest weather, hottest weather, and work our way through. So the overarching theme this entire situation is gonna be mitigating sweat. How can I go about mitigating sweat? And I know what you're thinking right now, if you're in South Florida, there's no such thing. And I get that kind of, I sort of agree. Yes, you're gonna sweat, but the cool thing is some of these fabrics have a natural scent blocking ability. They're not going to block your scent, but they block the, the, the wool fibers themselves, inhibit the growth of the bacteria that make you stink. So in essence, you are still mitigating the sweat because yes, you're sweating a lot, you're mo wicking that moisture away from you, but you're not stinking as much, and that is an awesome thing. But kind of keep that in the back of your mind as we go through this discussion, how can I keep sweat to a minimum? Because as you get towards colder weather, sweat kills, and that's important. So here we are, early season. These are the three pieces that I use the most. So we're gonna start off with the Uinta pant. This is a super, super lightweight fabric. In fact, if you really put it up against the light, you can kind of see through the mesh that's in there. It's got these awesome hip vents here and a pro tip uh, submitted by Craig Kroom. If you open up the hip uh, pockets and the crotch, you get a real nice breeze blowing through there. So credit to Craig Kroom for that one. Appreciate you, buddy. But it does really allow you to drop your, your heat very, very quickly. And I have found that these pants have held up exceptionally well. I, I've not babied any of this gear. Uh, when I bought my original set of hard scribble pants, which we'll go over in a minute, I took it to Colorado, I brought it here to Florida, I beat the snot out of it. It's tough conditions, everything st has stickers on it. It's very, very thick down here in the south, as anybody who's been down here knows. And I genuinely had one goal, just to see how it would work if I treated it like it was my canvas britches or my, my, my nylon woven fabrics. And thus, thus well, far, they've held up exceptionally well. I've got about three months of use into these. You can kind of see where, you know, uh, briars have, have uh, cotton areas. But, I mean, for as thin, thin as the pant is, it works remarkably well. The cool thing about these pants is they also have this elastic waistband here that has got a little rubber piece. And it's really nice to keep your shirt tucked in, which is kind of a thing for me. Uh, when you're doing layers, for me, it's important to kind of keep the, the shirts down where they're supposed to be and don't let them ride up as you start to put those layers on. But this is a very, very lightweight pant. It dries exceptionally well. The slightest breeze hits you and it blows right through. And I normally pair that with one or two, one or two tops. This is the 150 weight Merino top that they uh, just came out with. This is the early season wear. This is the short sleeve, short, short sleeve version. And I can honestly say that this pretty much is my base layer regardless. I really enjoy having a t-shirt uh, with no sleeves regardless of the temperatures. We'll get into that reason why in a little bit, but it is cooler. 
I mean, that's that's the biggest function here. If you don't have uh, sleeves, you're going to be a little cooler. Now, the downside to this shirt is you can see skin. I'm a white boy. When I get up in the tree, you could make the argument that, uh, you know, deer can see me. And they've got you covered in that regard as well. So this is the same weight fabric. This is their long sleeve option. It's got thumb hole loops here. So again, when you're putting those layers on, it works really well. But this is an ultra lightweight, ultra soft. There's there's no itch to these fabrics at all, which is really impressive because a lot of your cheaper wool uh, will be itchy. So that's that's kind of uh, that, that's kind of what, one of the biggest questions I get is wool is itchy and old wool, cheap wool, non super fine micro. Uh, wool is itchy this stuff is not so pretty much throughout the year early season we're gonna say highs in the 90s lows in the 60s these three pieces stay on me at all times and honestly lows down in the 50s I've already hunted in these pants and I think 52 degree temps got there to the tree was very cool wasn't sweating when I got to the tree and I felt a little little nippy I uh, zipped up the hip vents which is an awesome little feature kind of kept that heat in there a little bit more prevented that wind from blowing through it's awesome awesome combination all right so let's talk about cooler weather temps are starting to, to drop a little bit further you're starting to maybe see lows in the 40s and the 50s consistently maybe the highs don't break out of the 60s you need to start adding some some layering to what you're doing. Now again, I, I kind of tease this by saying sweat management matters and that's my goal. I sweat like a pig. It doesn't matter if it's 30 degrees outside or if it's 90 degrees outside, I'm gonna sweat. And when I get sweaty, I get uncomfortable, again, I stink and it makes it very hard to stay warm. So here's what I, where I start to go with this. I tend to keep the Uinta pant as my, as my outer pant, but this is the Kaibab 170 Merino bottom. When those temperatures get a little bit chillier, but I don't need a true soft shell pant. I just need a little extra layer of insulation. These 170 uh, Kaibab bottoms really, really pair well underneath the Uinta. And here's the benefit. Again, it's starting to get cool. I'm trying to mitigate my sweat. This is my insulating layer to this system, whereas the Uinta pro provides an outer layer that does provide some warmth, but it does allow me to drop that heat. So as I'm walking in these areas, I walk a very long distance. I have to keep in mind that if I put on too much too early, I'll end up being hot. And that's where the technical system really starts to kick in. This is the really fun part that I was, again, exper experimenting with in Colorado. Your activity outputs. How much do you sweat? How do you, how do you play with those levels? If you've got the 150 long sleeve or you got the 150 short sleeve, one of the things you can also do is start to pair another wool layer on top of that to provide you some extra warmth. If you remember earlier, I said that more or less the short sleeve is my go-to. Again, because I sweat a lot. It was 50 degrees the other day. I'm walking to the deer stand in my UN and this and then when I got to the deer stand and got finally got set up I cooled off I took a moment that, that sweat kind of what little bit of sweat had cre uh, crept in starts to back off a little bit I took the Kaibab 170 top and I put that over now this one has been worn a lot I have worn this a lot from Colorado all the way back it's got this awesome little quarter zip uh, piece right here and this tends to be my next layer but let's say you don't want to wear two two wool pieces one of the cool things you can do is feature it with a fleece layer. And we'll get to that in a minute, but for now we're gonna kinda of stick with putting these different pieces together, the, the win, Uinta pant, and just your next to skin layer, the Merino. The fleece is actually an awesome option. I've used that a lot. They've got a really uh, nice new hooded fleece piece I've been wearing uh, as in the cooler temperatures. But you're starting to see the picture of how you can take Merino layers, stack them on top of each other based on weight, based on condition, based on output, and take only a couple garments and go the distance. Honestly, uh, between these, uh, let's say you, you know you had both the 150s, you had both the 170s and the Uinta pant, I bet you I could probably Probably wear this all the way into uh, let's say low 50s high 40s I'm a hot natured person you kind of have to fa factor that into it but with these if there's no real wind still conditions um, high level output these garments right here are going to take me the distance in those conditions but let's kind of talk about some options if it's windier or even starting to dip down a little further into the temperatures okay so we're starting to hit that mid to, to mid late part of season Temperatures in the 30s, maybe it's it's 40s with some wind. You need something to kind of cut that wind. So what you need is that that outer layer that that stops that 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 holds a little more of that moisture, or not moisture. You don't want to hold that, but holds retains a little more of that heat as you progress. So we've got our base layers over here. Again, I'm starting with the 150, pretty much regardless of temperature, just because of how nat hot natured I am. But you could use the 170. We're going to set these off to the side here. But keep in mind that our base layer is picked on activity level. 
The next thing you're going to do is you're probably going to upgrade your pants. So right here we've got our hard scrabble pants. This is a soft shell. You've got your hip pockets. Most importantly, you've got your hip vents on the side. So what this allows you to do is have a active layer that retains a little bit more. It's a very light soft shell. It's a very functional soft shell, but this allows you to retain that heat a little bit more, dump it during high activity output situations. It's got the same little um, rubber uh, shirt, shirt holder. I, I don't know what that's actually called, but it's still got those features. It's just a slightly heavier pad. I tend to wear this once uh, we hit really windy conditions or maybe the, the 30s and 40s, and I pair it with those merino layers. Now, I'm a big vest guy, so what I tend to wear is my top, my merino layer. I tend to use their new fleece jacket, which is absolutely awesome. It is a grid fleece jacket, zip up the middle with a hood. I love fleece. I am a fleece fanatic. I just adore it. And this is super warm, super soft. It could go underneath uh, their Harb Scrabble jacket if you wanted to, but what I do is I tend to pair it with the Harb Scrabble vest. So this is where I start to retain that inner chest heat. I'm still having the ability to dump it off the sides, dumping it from my hip vents. This is an excellent option as you, those temperatures start to dip and they're starting to get a little bit colder, a little bit windier. So there you kind of have it. Early season to late season, let the layers and your activity level tell you what product you need, what, what layering system you need rather. Early season, you're gonna wear as many as few layers as humanly possible. As your activity level allows for it and the temperatures begin to dip, you need to start adding those layers to it. One of the biggest questions that I get asked all the time is what two items should I buy? I need to get some base layers, I've got outers, I've got all these different things. It depends, that answer kind of depends on where you're at, right? I, I genuinely believe that probably the Kaibab 170 bottom and the 150 early season and long sleeve are going to suit the majority of people. Maybe if you're in South Florida, you really don't need that 170 bottom. So I would tell you uh, maybe go with like a, the, the two 150 tops so that you can, you know, alternate, uh, you know, throughout the days, the severity of the heat. If you're up north, I definitely recommend the 170 Kaibab quarter zip or the 170 Kaibab bottom. Uh, those would be my first two items that I would pick. And then you really need to let the seasons and your activity level tell you what you need. That's kind of the cool part about this is you may not use these items the same way that I do. In fact, Chase doesn't. Chase relies on much heavier merino levels, uh, much heavier merino layers rather, to obtain the same warmth level. He's also a cold nature person who doesn't sweat. If I wore the 300s while I was walking in and the temperatures he does, I would be a sweaty mess. So long and short of this is there's a variety of options companies like scree gear who we're working with this season to build our layering systems to bring this to you have got a variety of options that will extend your stay keep you more comfortable i think they'll fit with an active lifestyle or passive lifestyle whether you're walking 30 yards into the woods and getting in there or if you're going two miles deep and you're you know you know hauling all your stuff in in camera gear like me so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget you can go to screegear.com chasing tails all caps to save 15 percent on your order likes subscribe, hit that little notification bell notification so that you get notifications every time we drop videos on the channel. And then check out the podcast. We'd love to have you over there. We've got great interviews with people from all over the country. We're documenting our own adventures and we're all we're always happy to have you along for the ride. So until next time, no matter what you do, get outside and enjoy the great outdoors.